So, uh, welcome to this uh, webinar uh, will, uh, uh, that will address SIVA uh, and more particularly the latest release uh, of SIVA, SIVA 2017, so released just at the end of uh, last year. Uh, some of you are SIVA users, so uh, and maybe uh, you are under maintenance, so you have received this version already. Some of you are not SIVA users, so uh, I will uh, both uh, ask to both of you, trying to illustrate both uh, the, the general overview, to give a general overview on SIVA, and also to highlight the, the main new features uh, of SIVA 2017, particularly for people who, who does not know yet this version, but who have used uh, the previous ones. So uh, let's uh, let's continue. So this is uh, the schedule for this webinar. Uh, a few slides, quick slides to introduce X10 and SIVA, uh, and then we will uh, spend uh, the main part of this webinar to discuss about the uh, SIVA features and the main SIVA 2017 features. Uh, well, the main part will be the SIVA UT uh, module. Uh, we have a lot of things to, to, to say about it, but we will also discuss a little bit the uh, analysis part, UT analysis part, uh, a little bit of guided web, and also eddy current and our RTN city. Uh, we will also discuss one point, which is also uh, uh, one of the main highlights of this session, which is meta models available for both UT and eddy current simulations. So as said, I will give both a general overview. Uh, so that people that do not know uh, uh, very well SIVA will have an overview of the features and uh, the, the, the organization of this software. But, of course, the main points will be to highlight the new features of SIVA 2017. And after this, so which should, should last about an hour, maybe a little bit more, I will try not to, to go uh, too much over one hour. Uh, uh, we will have a question and answer sessions with the chat tools uh, of WebEx. So at this time, at the time, you will be able to ask me your questions. Okay. So uh, extend for those who do not know us quite well is a NDT engineering uh, company. Well, uh, for us, our main business is to promote the use of simulation in the ND world to promote the use of modeling in order to assist uh, ND developments and to help people to uh, improve NDT methods. Uh, so as a consequence, we hope the safety of the structures and safety of the uh, world. So our main business is to uh, distribute the SIVA software worldwide, both the SIVA expert version, the SIVA professional version, but we also have a, an educational tool, SIVA Education, for uh, universities or training centers. We provide also technical support and training to this tool. Today we will uh, concentrate our, uh, our presentation on the, on the professional version of SIVA. We also provide consulting studies uh, based on modeling, based also on trials, but uh, often a mix of, of them. But of course, we use a lot SIVA for this activity, and we answer needs of uh, industries in different contexts, uh, qualification, design, uh, expertise, parametric studies. So we can also help you in this way, on a consulting basis, not only by uh, selling you licenses of the software. Okay, so uh, modeling is used in NDT for different purposes. Uh, we can mention the use of simulation, let's say, to prepare inspections, to design sensors, to design inspection methods, to prepare uh, or to confirm or to test a given inspection procedures. The idea is to um, try to do some trials virtually by simulations in order to uh, decrease the number of real tests we will have to do in this, uh, in this uh, for designing inspections and, uh, by the way, help you to find the best solutions in less time. Uh, the results of the simulation should help you to have a better mastering of uh, the NDT methods you want to implement, better feedback, better knowledge, and less iterate in this development. Expertise can be also uh, an activity where simulation can help, 
by reproducing field results, you can understand complex situations and maybe uh, simulation can help to assess uh, a given diagnostics and to confirm or disprove it by explaining especially complex uh, signals in complex situations. Qualifications. Qualifications means uh, demonstrates the performance of your inspections, so demonstrates its reliability. So usually it means to test uh, the, uh, the performance of the inspection uh, even if you are not in the nominal conditions, even if some parameters come to disturb the inspections, so you have to test the reliability of inspections for this. Uh, which can lead to a lot of tests, a lot of mockups to build. So the idea is to also use simulation to support this and save time, save mockup, uh, in order to help you to predict the worst case scenario or also to compute periodic curves. This is a way to estimate reliability of an inspection as well. And simulation can help to be uh, to, to support the qualification uh, and technical justification uh, works. In general speaking, uh, modeling is a nice tool to discuss and convince because it gives you visual eye images of a given entity situations and it can help you to convince your interlocutors, let's say uh, your customers, your colleagues, your uh, suppliers, for instance. Or training and teaching is also uh, one of the interests of using modeling in NDT. Okay, a few words to introduce SIVA. So it's a software, modeling software dedicated to NDT uh, modeling. It's not a general purpose, it's really NDT oriented. It covers different inspection methods from UT to guided wave, RT and CT, and eddy currents. And it also includes a data analysis uh, tools for UT, uh, helping you to load the real data and do the analysis work in this software. We have two versions, as said, SIVA experts, so professional industrial versions, and a simplified one for education. This tool is developed by a CEA, Research Center in, in France. Uh, the development team is about 30 people, and of course we are close to them, but we are not ourselves in CEA uh, to, to help this, this part. Okay, CIDA UT now, that's uh, the main part of this talk. Uh, so it includes some tools to compute the uh, beam, beam propagation in a given component with a given probe. Uh, in particular, it can compute beam uh, generated with phase array probes, it can compute delay lows and see the fields that result from these delay lows. You can simulate inspections, it means predict echoes scattered by a defect or scattered by the geometry computing A scan, B scan, sector scan images and displaying them in the CAD window. It can support uh, sensitivity analysis studies or POD curves uh, computations and this is one of the main new features of these versions. Uh, it's not new in itself but uh, you have new tools for this. We have new tools for this. You have in the UT the analysis parts. You can load M2M or Olympus data files or if you have other formats, a plugin solution is available to load other data files and then do the analysis works in SIVA. It covers pulse echo conventional UT, phased array, uh, TSM techniques, tandem, TOFT technique, so most of the UT techniques can be uh, simulated. Let's go for a demo. First, a general overview of the software, and then we will highlight the new features. So, give me a second, and you will see on the screen <coughs> the SIVA uh, desk, what we call the desk, so the start window of the software. Um, UT, UT analysis, guided web, the current, RT, you see here the different modules. And inside the UT, uh, the two main, let's say, tools are the beam, and inspection simulation ones. Let's open one. Let's start with the beam. You can initialize the configurations with some data and then you go straight into the software itself. In this page you will define your own inputs. You have a graphical view of the configurations. Here a representation of the probe, in this case simulation testing and a planar block. 
All data will be defined in some panels available at the bottom. Specimen, <coughs> in which we define the geometry. That can be simple, defined with parametric geometries, like a planar one, or cylindrical ones, or maybe a weld. We have some templates of different welds, bevel available, square, V, double V, etc. And two more complex, such as nozzle, for instance, available like this. We can also uh, manage CAD geometries. You can load 2D CAD or 3D CAD geometries. For 2D CAD, you can also uh, draw it inside SIVA directly. Uh, so typically, irregular parts, irregular shapes, complex shapes can be loaded, can be uh, defined for the test piece geometry. Let's try a 3D CAD one. <clears throat> so we load IGS step DXF files. So really common uh, CAD format that you can generate from any CAD software. Here an example of a 3D CAD geometry. Okay, so different uh, possibilities in the UT modules for the specimen geometry. Then the second tab is to define the acoustic properties. For that, you have three main data for the most simple case, density, velocities for long wave and shear wave. You can rely on a database of some materials available, but you can put your own values as well. And for more complex situations, you can input attenuation, noise data, or simulate anisotropic data based on the knowledge of the elastic constants. This is of course, additional inputs that are required to simulate anisotropy, and also specific models for coarse grain, for instance, or also for composites. We have a specific uh, models to simulate uh, this type of materials. Okay, let's keep here a simple carbon, carbon steel situation. Okay, nothing relatively new in this panel in this version. In terms of probe, the second. Uh, panel will so uh, ask you to define the transducer. In this panel, you will have menus to define if you deal with immersion testing or contact testing, dual elements or other designs, single element or phased array with different type of arrays, linear or matrix, for instance, and then some menus to define the dimensions of uh, the crystal, the shape of it. <coughs> uh, other tabs are given to uh, here define, for instance, the pulse signals with the center frequency of bandwidth. Here you see the excitation pulse that you will define. So, which is new is that now instead of defining step by step all the elements here <coughs> that you know normally from the uh, manufacturer data sheet of the problem, we have now a library available uh, from manufacturer's library. So you can import directly uh, prop data from a database. If you click on this button, a new uh, panel will pop up, and here the Olympus or Imasonic tools can be, uh, menu can be selected, and in each of them you have a library of different uh, probes or design dimensions that you can load. For instance, let's select GE. You have here a quite long list of probe references available. You see here the name of the model of transducers available. You can filter the list. For instance, let's say I want just a conventional single element one. Hop, I select this in the filter, and I have access to the uh, about 30 different uh, probe available in this library. So let's select, for instance, WB452. I have here some data. OK. Once I am OK, I accept. <clears throat> All data are imported, can be read in the SIVA panel, and actually everything is down. The probe is defined. You can see here the wedge, the crystal, and uh, with the orientation, uh, in this case, uh, adapted for a uh, shear wave at 45 degrees. Let's characterize the field of this probe. We are in the beam module, so you just have to define a wave to compute, shear wave in this case, a zone of interest, let's say uh, 50 millimeters by 100, and you put it that below the probe, you run and you have the field that is calculated. After normally a short time, you have a window representing the results of this, so color map 
representing the field in the zone we have defined, and also some curves that shows fields versus depth or fields versus x-axis. You can here put the 3D view. It helps to see where we are. Okay, you see here the field lobe, which is here. The max is represented in light blue in SIVA by default. And where you are green and yellow, you are out of the focal spot. Okay. And you have some curve and cursors to characterize beam variation in terms of amplitude versus depth here, near field, far field, and also the width here that you can size at minus 3, minus 6 dB. You can wear the shape just behind it and change its orientation or define another one and maybe another type of defect because you have different shape, different geometry of defect you can uh, model. A uh, rectangular is a possibility, but you also have a semi-elliptical that can be also uh, sometimes more uh, representative to a given defect, like this. Cat contour, you can load a, a cat file that have a, so, uh, in a, a planar defect, but with a non-rectangular, non-elliptical shape, or multifacet, which will be more like crack-like geometries, like this. Or zigzag. It's just some examples. You can draw different shapes of uh, defects. And then calibration holes, such as flat bottom holes, side wheel holes, or you can see here the rest of the list, volume defect inclusions are available. Let's put a side wheel hole, for instance. I put it there. Okay. And once you have defined the defect you want to compute, well, you arrange the prop positions. You can double click on it to start your scanning. And in inspection panel, you define the scanning uh, one, the step and then the number of steps you want to consider. It's a bit short here. Let's enlarge it a little bit. OK, it should cover more or less the region of interest in this case, you can also scan along two axes. It will, here in this case, provide the scan images. If you do like this, like a raster scan like this. Okay, once defect and scanning are defined, okay, let's check, let's just check the mode you want to compute. Okay, let's do that in 2D to go faster. And you can run this case. Okay, you have here the results of the simulations. So, uh, a scan for each position. B scan view that you can also, oh, of course, I'm a bit off here, so it's not really a nice scan. I miss my flows. I was out of the central axis. This one will be better. Okay, with here a big scan with a good response from both flows that are uh, here at the back wall, corner defect, corner echo here on this defect, reflection on the side will all, reflection here also on this defect. Okay, so peak diffraction is also calculated. You can see here at the tip some signals computed. And of course, you can assess the level of amplitude of each one. You put a zone of analysis. It will give you the amplitude, time of flight, of all uh, echoes you have calculated. Here from this B-scan view or from the true B-scan view if it's easier to manage. A scan is also available here. Okay. Let's also mention that before running even the simulations, you can uh, check the coverage uh, using the ray tracing tools. Uh, here you have uh, some tools. It's not new for this version, but it's uh, quite recent. You can display quickly the beam uh, size, an estimation of the beam size, and also uh, see for the full scanning. If you change the scanning, for instance, here, you can see up which zone you will cover, more or less, based on, based on ray tracing. 
Right. So let's now, uh, after this introduction, this overview of the features of the beam and inspection simulation, let's concentrate on the main new things. So we have seen the built-in library of UT industrial probes. You can load D or uh, Olympus uh, probes from catalogs, and you have some tools also to load uh, imasonic based uh, probe. We have also new features regarding weld inspection modeling and nozzle inspection modeling. So let's uh, see some, uh, some examples to see these new, new things. I will load the file. So especially for weld inspection with phased array probe, you have uh, now one new type of focal laws allowing to define a uh, different focal spot along a bevel axis to easily control the focal spot location along a given axis. So for instance, the chamfer or bevel axis. This focal law available so in the, the panel of SIVA where you define focal laws, which is array settings, you have here sectoral scanning projection. You have a lot, a long list of different type of focal laws. You can uh, simulate and compute in SIVA. This one is a new one. Sectoral scanning projections. Let's see what it looks like. It helps you to easily define here this type of things, to define different focal points along a given bevel. Here you can see you directly control the angle of this axis. So if you have another uh, bevel angles, I don't know, let's change that to a, a 40 degree one, directly the uh, orientations uh, of the different focal points will follow another directions. And then you can also change the distance, so, so the sound path distance from which you define your focusing. So new type of focal laws, you define the settings, then SIVA will compute the laws for you. So it's a kind of sector scan, but with a focal depth, a focal position, adapted to the uh, bevel orientation here. So let's see first the results that we have simulated here on the beam modeling. You can see here. Let's see on this view, the coverage you have obtained with 10 shots focusing along this axis. So you see that you cover, uh, not, uh, cover quite well the, the bevel. You have here, you can see that we don't cover the route in this case. We will need maybe another focal load to directly uh, steer the beam at this location. It's not the case here. So you can, okay, check if you cover correctly the, the area you want to cover in terms of zone coverage, you have a good estimation of that. So it's a, a new type of focal laws you can try, use, and quite easily define in SIVA, to, uh, especially for such situations. You can also apply it not only to compute the zone coverage, but also to simulate the response of a defect. Let's see an example. I load the same probe, the same settings. But now, inspection simulation. Inspection simulation means you have defined defects here and a scanning. And let's see what would be the response from those two defects with this focus sector scan. OK. So this is my results page. Let's display some page I want to display. You can customize your analysis page. Okay, you have a C scan view and set of scan view. Okay. The best response is obtained here for this defect. And also here or for another angles. We have here you can see if you cover with a good enough sensitivity the uh, the different uh, defects. In this case, typically lack of fusion defects are represented by these two rectangular flow standard flows. Okay, you can try of course all the settings compared to a conventional probes compared to a non-focused uh, sectoral scan, for instance. And of course, it's just an example, so you can imagine imagine test 
different uh, inspection method, of course, another maybe position of the probe, and uh, with simulation, uh, try to define the optimum uh, case and the optimum settings. In terms of nozzle modeling, we also have uh, a few new things. Let's open an example. So here we have defined a nozzle inspection. The geometry of the nozzle is defined using a parametric geometry available here in the drop-down list with some parameters to define the primary, secondary cylinders, connection zone, etc. Okay. Uh, you inspect around the connection zone here. You scan like this. And this is a fader probe that is used that do sector scan in this area. So you could already do, do, do that before. What is new is that you can account now for a so-called exclusion area around the secondary cylinder. Of course, you have the weld connection here, so sometimes you cannot inspect at the optimum uh, locations. So uh, you can input here an inclusion area that will show you clearly if you can or not put your probe and that will allow you or not to define a given scanning. So it helps you to define a more realistic scanning. Let's say for instance you have a larger exclusion area. In this case the probe cannot be any more uh, scanned on this locations. If I reduce, of course you can change the propositions, but you can also here consider now a reduced exclusion area is now available again. Okay. Uh, so exclusion area is in a, a new features to help you define a proper scanning. Second new things regarding nozzle inspection is a new type of defect that is uh, quite typical to this uh, geometry of component and this inspection. This is the so-called orthoradial flow available here in the list of defect geometry at the end here for nozzles. And this flow will follow the secondary cylinder axis here. And of course, uh, it uh, can be uh, along uh, the, 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 the weld at this location. Let's see if you change the height. If you change the angular aperture, the flow geometry is adapted. Its position can be changed. Its position distance to the secondary cylinder. And also a tilt angle can be given. Like this. So this typical flow can be now simulated. OK? Let's see the simulation. Examples, the, the results. Okay, let's display. Simplify a little bit my analysis page. Okay, like this, for instance. Okay, so see a sector scan view for one location, and you have another sector scan for the different position of the probe. Put it bigger. Okay, now you can see the different echoes computed on this case. And see if you move the prop positions where you see something where you have less sensitivity depending on the prop positions around these defects. So here this is where you have the max response at this location. And you can analyze echoes, amplitude, etc., etc. So a few tools to assist uh, nozzle inspection simulation. And it's, uh, it's just the beginning. Uh, some tools are still in development to assist uh, this quite complex component uh, geometry inspection. So something new will come also in the future release in this category. Okay, uh, what is also new is the ability to define more complex uh, scanning trajectories, for instance, coming from uh, robotic trajectories. 
uh, you will define them with a text file. So let's just see an example. If I come back here to define an external, another trajectory, you have to go in the inspection panel and instead of parametric, you select external. You load a dot .trg file, which is a text file. I can show you the, the format after if you want. But it's quite simple, uh, simple format. And anyway, you can, uh, from a, a given one, export first the format from a classical scanning in order to help you to find the format. So here, for instance, this is uh, the scanning pattern I have defined here. My probe, I put it, I just want to put it uh, like this, all right, so that you can see this example of scanning patterns. So you are not anymore uh, uh, limited to just a simple line or a rest of scanning. You can also define uh, adapted scanning or optimized scanning or maybe uh, simulate uh, uh, manual scanning or something like this, random scanning, let's say to see its impact on the response. Another uh, new feature of CIVA 2017 is uh, improvement regarding uh, the total focusing method simulation, TFM. Uh, so TFM is not new inside CIVA. It uh, exists for, uh, has been existed for a few versions, but it has been uh, enhanced for this release. And I think it comes also along with uh, 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 an increasing popularity uh, and implementation of this technique over, all over the world. So let's mention uh, the new features we have around TSM. First of all, uh, TSM parameters can now be defined before the computations. It used to be before a post-processing. You, you had to do the, uh, the FMC acquisitions, then you post-process in a second time to uh, get your TFM reconstructions. Uh, you can now predefine before the full simulation the TFM parameters uh, to, to, to do that in one, in one shot and directly have the TFM result at the end, which uh, gives uh, also the ability to do some parametric studies varying a, a, a given parameter for TFM studies or running uh, several simulations in batch mode. Uh, it's now available also for TFM. It was not really easy before because each one would have to be post-processed. It's not anymore the case. Uh, second new thing to mention, you can uh, do also PWI TFM. FM, FMC TFM was already existed, full matrix capture. Now another exciting mode is available for simulation. This is uh, PWI, so based on the sector scan. Uh, new images, new imaging system has been developed. Uh, uh, more cursors, the T-scan image, uh, similar to the T-scan image you may find in M2M uh, systems if you have some. Uh, so uh, with more cursors, more ability to analyze and to do really uh, deep analysis of uh, TFM results. It was a bit limited before. Which is also available now is the ATFM algorithms. Uh, A stands for adapted TFM. It's a, a specific uh, uh, inspection TFM methods available in M2M systems, which uh, actually does two TFM reconstructions. The first TFM reconstructions to build and to know and to learn, let's say, online the uh, front surface, and based on this, an adapted TFM uh, focal lows for the zone of interest. So you can simulate these settings in SIVA as well uh, and so that you can uh, predict if ATFM can be, will be uh, efficient uh, if you use an M2M system. Another thing to mention is the sliding TFM mode. Uh, sliding means that you can uh, concatenate or accumulate or uh, bring together different TFM reconstructions that will follow a prop scanning. So instead of having only one image, we'll have a set of different images following the prop scanning, if you scan the probe, and you bring them together. 
One application can be wall thickness measurement, for instance, if you can reconstruct the full profile uh, of a component. Uh, let's see where it is, all these things in SIVA. I am back in my SIVA window. Okay, let's open one case. Hop. Let's open first the model page where you define the input data. So here you can see uh, weld, uh, bevel. You can see that now also we are in welds. I miss. I forgot to tell that before. You can represent the heat affected zone. Uh, you can display it. In this case, we want to do TFM in that zone. Okay. So you define this in a resetting panel. You have now new focal loads. One is TFM. Before you had to define FMC, and then the post processing for TFM. Now directly TFM is there. And then once you have selected TFM, you can select different excitation, excitation type, FMC, full matrix capture, which means that you excite successively each element in transmission. And then you record the received signals in all elements in receptions. TFN will be the reconstruction of all element, elementary signals uh, afterwards uh, based on time of flight computations. Okay? So here you have the parameters of the zone of interest, 10 by 10 millimeters in this case. Which mode you use, you assume, to compute time of flight that will allow the focusing the total focusing method reconstruction in this zone and some more advanced options and filters that also were not available before to optimize the image of the reconstruction. Instead of FMC now you can also enable here PWI. PWI means that you will uh, have a sector scan as an excitation, it's not, not anymore a full matrix capture. You define initial and final angle, and you excite this, you acquire with that mode. It may be more efficient, with more energy, than the full matrix capture for some applications. Okay, let's see the results. So, depending on the mode of reconstruction, different TFM images can be uh, produced. This is here my TFM image with direct modes, okay, but a more relevant reconstruction mode in this case due to the flow uh, orientation and location uh, makes use of the corner echo reconstruction, this is the TTT modes, in this case you obtain such image, you can display it on the 3D view. Okay, this is my reconstruction here of my FMC TFM uh, acquisition. You can see that you have some cursors to help the analysis of the so-called now T-scan image with all results available here in the toolbox. You can select as for another uh, simulation and uh, selection zone to analyze uh, the amplitude you have, maybe do some contour to plot 6 dB, 3 dB, 9 dB contours or another threshold and to do the analysis. This image can be also exported in text or in uh, an image format. Okay. Right for CFM. So, a lot more capabilities in line with the current developments that uh, these methods uh, 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 have all over the world for different applications. A new um, possibility again uh, in SIVA UT is the implementation directly inside SIVA of a finite element model to simulate field flow interactions. Um, 
in addition to the models already available, which are mainly based on the semi-analytical approach, you have now a new hybrid model that uses FEM around the defect area and can do 2D and 3D FEM. It's particularly useful when you are out of the validity domain, of course, of semi-analytical models. Of course, it has a cost. It, uh, it uh, takes longer time to compute. Uh, but sometimes, uh, when you reach the uh, limits of the classical SIVA models, it can be really useful. What are these typical cases? This is where you reach and you want to simulate small defect uh, response, so typically defects lower than the wavelength, or where you have some uh, complex surface waves generated on the defect surface when you are close to critical angles. These are just some examples. In this current release, the EFM model is implemented only for the moment for planar and rectangular defects. It will be extended to other defect shapes in the future. Uh, let's see example of results where we have compared semi-analytical approach and FEM for different flow size in this situation here, with size varying from 5 mm, so quite large one, to 0.1 mm. Here you see in this table the results obtained first with the most common model in SIVA called Kirchhoff GTD and then the new one, the transient FEM model. At 5 mm, okay, it's our reference, or it's put to 0 dB. 2 mm, it's uh, consistent. Both models give the same answer, more or less. 0.5, you start to have a, quite a, a noticeable difference. And 0.1, uh, you have a large, large difference between the models. Actually, Kirchhoff tends to overestimate uh, small defects you keep a given level of amplitude, whereas a more precise transient FEM will uh, more accurately model the loss of uh, response and the, the lower response you have on small defects. You see in this image the larger defect and a smaller defect with the curve on the left with the FEM model on the right. Uh, so the large one, the small one. So the small one still gives a quite noticeable signals with Kirchhoff KTD, while, while with the FEM, the small one, well, you check, you can verify that you, you, you don't detect it anymore. So, as soon as you go beyond or below the wavelength size, transient FEM should give a more accurate answer. And often, well, you can be close to this limit. So, where does it take place in SIVA? If I come back to uh, a given case where I have a, a planar rectangular defect, here for instance, it's just here. You stay in the same module, but here in simulation settings, interactions, flow, you have the model used for the computation. Check off if GTD is the default one. If necessary, you can switch to transient FEM. So it can be a defect, uh, a choice defect per defect. Right? Next point. Next point that we want to highlight, and this is maybe, uh, maybe the major uh, new features in SIVA 2017. <coughs> this is the implementation of uh, metamodels in SIVA, which bring quite a lot of uh, possibilities. Metamodels are available for SIVA UT, but also for SIVA EDQRENT. Uh, we, we have to mention this as well. It's also connected to the EDQRENT modules. So it takes place, it's used, it can be used when you run uh, parametric variations. And this is, uh, uh, well, uh, the typical situation where uh, simulation is useful. This is when you want to study the impact of parameters in a positive way, for instance, to optimize uh, an inspection method, or in a negative way to study the worst case, to track for the worst case, to uh, estimate the reliability of an inspection to estimate uh, degradation factors, all these things. So uh, you want to understand what happens. So you want to study the impact of parameters. This is something you uh, all similar uh, modelers do. So meta models can be really useful in this context. What is a meta model? A meta model literally is a model of the model. We can also uh, call that a smart interpolator. 
The idea is to build a set of simulations, but not only to keep this set of results given by classical SIVA, SIVA uh, computations, but from this to build a meta model that will reproduce the behavior of result variation, but not only in a few points of the grid, but for the whole uh, variation range and in a continuous way. So you will be able to uh, have a lot more samples, let's say, in a full variation range. So for multi-parametric studies, it's, it's really useful. You access to a lot of results once you have built this meta model uh, in real time, let's say. So it allows real time fine sampling or we really find sampling along the full variation range for an extensive parametric analysis. And thanks to this, you can plot 1D curve, uh, point zone amplitude versus one parameter, but not only a few points, but uh, uh, continuous curves. And you can plot also 2D plots that will map on the same image the influence of two parameters together. It also gives access to a real quantitative sensitivity analysis. Sobol indices have been implemented in SIVA, and these statistical tools, only uh, available because you have meta models, uh, can help to estimate the uh, impact, the relative impact of different parameters. You can know which are the important parameters compared to another one. You can estimate which parameters are really influencing the results for a given variation range. You have such graph that gives you uh, the results uh, and uh, a synthetic response of this. It can be also really powerful for POD analysis because on demand you can resample all your data in the variation range. And so that you can adapt the number of data you need for an accurate pod curve, which is often a real big lack with experimental pod curve. You have not enough points to have reliable data with simulations and with meta models now you can build after the first meta model constructions you can build a real uh, a big amount of, uh, of data of points and then more accurate port curve thanks to meta models you can even go to array of port curves so not only one but a set of ones in order to estimate the reliability of your POD curve as well Let's go for a demo of this, how it works inside SIVA and where it is. So it's connected to UT and ET modules. Let's have an example with a UT case. I will maybe clean a little bit my window. And uh, <clears throat> open one case. Okay, so let's take this example. This is a weld inspection, actually a pipe weld inspection. You see here the weld, where one lack of fusion defect has been put here. And it's inspected with a phaser probe, a quite large one. And typically this probe um, are used for the zonal discrimination method, where some different channels are defined using different parts of the array in order to focus the beam in a given zone of the weld. In these simulations, these parts of the elements are used in order to um, generate a beam in the zone of my defect. Good, in this case. So to focus the beam in this zone of the weld. And other channels will be used to cover the rest of the weld. So this is a simulation of the so-called zonal discrimination method. Okay, let's say I want to estimate the reliability of my inspection method depending on the parameters, or I want to study the impact of the different parameters. So it works like a, a parametric study in SIVA. Maybe you know already this. You can enable a variation on the parameters uh, in SIVA. You would do the same here. You define which parameter you want to consider as not fixed, but varying one. You select them with a the right click. In this case, for instance, the shear wave velocity has been selected to be a varying parameter and not a fixed value. We have done the same with the flow height, with 
the flow position along y. So in this case, because you don't fully control the real shape of the well, so as a consequence, the lack of fusion will may have a different position along this axis, along the axial axis. Same for the tilt. You don't control exactly the real diesel uh, chamfer of the, of the well once it's welded. So it has a given uncertainty, the orientation of the chamfer and so the orientation of the lack of fusion. And also the position of the defect in that zone of inspection is also maybe not always like this at the center perfectly uh, adapted for this uh, this channel. Maybe it's less less good. So I have picked up one, two, three, four and five varying parameters in order to define a multi-parametric study. You have a variation panel in the case of parametric study, but now instead of only the parametric menu that you used to have before, parametric will just compute a grid of values, that's it. Meta model will also compute a grid, but will build a meta model based on these calculations. Different uh, strategies are proposed. Either you select full factorial and you define a variation range for all parameters, tilt, ligament, height, between this and this, and three values for all of them. So you have a, also a fixed grid, and based on that, so a meta model would be built. Or you have other so-called drawing schemes that will that should be more optimal in terms of meta model precision, for instance, Sobol. And then you don't define a regular step, you just define the range, min and max, and a number of samples. And based on that, a meta model will be built. Third level, adaptive design. You also start from this, but you also can iterate with additional uh, samples, let's say 100 more, for instance, in order to reach a given criteria, a given uh, uh, accuracy criteria. This is the adaptive design case, which is can be more time consuming. In my case, here it's not adaptive, I have selected Sobol drawing schemes and launched a computation with 243 a simulation uh, uh, for the, these five parameters. So uh, my design of experiment will use this. It represents, to give you an idea, three hours and a half of computation on a laptop, which is not nothing, but with not that much, actually. Uh, three hours and a half. And then I have my meta model as a result. Let's see what looks like a meta model analysis page. You have different tabs. The first tab, first tab here gives you the list of values that have been selected by your drawing schemes for all parameters, the tilt, the ligaments, y, height, etc. So you just see how the parameters have been selected. Then the second tab is uh, really useful. This is the tab where you can check the accuracy of the meta model that has been built from the calculations. Here you have this graph, true versus predicted. True, this is my SIVA computations. Predicted, this is what, how fit the meta model to my SIVA computations. You can see here that the, the fit is quite, quite good. Only a few points are out of the median line. And the same type of estimation of accuracy is given through histograms with a level of accuracy in relative or the absolute values. Okay, and different in interpolators can be used at this level here to optimize the meta model uh, accuracy. Once you have selected an interpolator, then you go to the analysis of the results. So you see here uh, curves of uh, variation of amplitude of signals versus all parameters, for instance, let's say the tilt angle. But it's not only one curve. You have the full variation range, so you can see how change this curve if you select another flow height. So you see for small flow height, the tilt has no influence. For large flow height, it has this shape, which is not anymore symmetric and not maximal at minus 30 degrees. For a medium range of flow height, the maximum, so this curve is more or less symmetric. So you can, you have here an idea of how the different parameters 
have uh, interactions together. Another way to see that, that is to plot 2D analysis. You can plot the impact of uh, on the results of two parameters, in this case shear wave versus ligament and maybe for another flow height for instance. You can see that it varies much more versus shear waves compared to uh, ligament which is more stable but the behavior versus ligament will be not the same for lower shear wave velocity compared to larger or medium range. So all parameters are interdependent. Well, not all, but some of them. You can have an idea of this thanks to this analysis. And of course, uh, you, you see the, it's not only two, three, four points that you have. You have a meta model, so you have a continuous response for all parameters. Sensitivity analysis is also an output, as it gives you here the shared responsibility, let's say, on the results due to the different parameters. So you can see, uh, see at a glance that the height of the flow has the largest impact, which is quite uh, logical, compared to uh, wave velocity, tilt angle, ligament, or whatever. But of course, this is not only dependent on the parameter's nature, but also on the variation you assume for these parameters. So here you have access to the variation range. And you can change it. By default, a uniform uh, uh, distribution has been assumed for all parameters. But let's say, now, okay, I want to study the influence of parameters, but assuming a constant value for my flow height, let's say 2.5. Okay. Now, the flow height is not anymore influent. Of course, it's constant. You can see the shared uh, and the relative impact of the other ones. Okay. Wave velocity, okay, I assume it's not a uniform, but it's more around the mean value that I have, uh, uh, which is representative, or let's say also the same for the tilt. Uh, I assume a Gaussian distribution, okay? And for the other, I keep uniform. The relative impact may change, and maybe the ligament has now more influence compared to my previous assumptions. So based on what you know of your inputs, how it varies in your range, you can uh, it will affect the sensitivity analysis and you can uh, you can perform your, your analysis. Okay, then POD. So it's from this you can directly build the POD curve in uh, in real time, let's say. You just click here POD, you import this file. Okay. Create a new ones. It, uh, you have to select one of the parameters to be representative of the flow size. In this case, it's the flow height. Okay. It will be the x-axis of your POD curve. And the POD curve is built based on the meta model results you have. Okay. The first curved is defined. You have here access to the pod parameters and often the problem is that you have not enough points in the good uh, range of the curve to have a reliable POD curve. No problem anymore with the meta model. I can resample on demand. I put instead of five points per flow size, I put 20 points. I apply and I resample and my, uh, my POD curves and I have the new results in uh, less than one a second. You can also display array of pods instead of uh, a POD and a confidence band, uh, which, is, uh, which is required often with experimental POD. With a simulation POD, the main uncertainty is the statistical distribution. So uh, you can, instead of building only one POD, you can build let's say 100 of POD, and it will give you an idea of the dispersion. Each time it resample, it do Monte Carlo uh, sampling of the input, and you have here different POD curves, and you can estimate that the lower confidence band is given by uh, the, uh, the envelope of this curve at 95%. And based on that, if you have uh, an uncertainty 
on the given distribution you have assumed, for instance, okay, the, I'm not sure at all about the data I have about shear wave velocity. I put 50%, you apply, and again in a few seconds, I can build a new array of pods of 100 pods with much more shear scattering on the data. So meta models actually overcome totally the lack of data uh, of data people have when usually people run PoD studies, lack of experimental data. Now you have access in real time to an infinity amount of data, not infinity, but uh, a, a large enough amount of data. Of course, you have to take care of the inputs, but uh, you know the statistical validity of this. But uh, this tool is really powerful for for such uh, type of analysis, sensitivity analysis and PoD study. So it's now available uh, in SIVA, UT and SIVA IT. Okay, let's go to the, the other modules now. This is, uh, it was uh, the main part was SIVA UT. Uh, what time is it? It's six. I will try to, to be quite fast for the uh, 15 minutes remaining regarding the other modules. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, data analysis. Uh, so you may know that SIVA is not only a simulation tool, but allow also to perform uh, data analysis. You can load uh, M2M, Gecko, Olympus files, and do the analysis with SIVA. You have some tools to allow you to ident identify indications, to build uh, indication tables, etc., etc. It's now a few years that we have this, uh, this uh, enough tools to do this inside SIVA. You have quite advanced tools also, such as segmentations to uh, enable a quite clever analysis methods. Of course, TFM can be also used based on experimental data or signal processing as well. Okay, let's mention two main new features in uh, SIVA 2017 in this uh, analysis part. One is the ability to do lateral wave linearization, then deletion for TOFT analysis. We didn't have this feature before. It's now available. So on the right here, you have the linearization of the lateral wave, which is down. And another interesting new feature is uh, an, uh, an optimization of the automation of the analysis. We call that template in SIVA. Template is actually an analysis process. Let's say you have done that for the part of a specimen of a typical specimen you want to analyze in a given way. If then you have hundreds of meters of the same specimen of a hundred of components, you want to apply the same analysis procedures, you can use the same templates, same uh, methods to identify some thresholds, same uh, gates, same uh, uh, analysis window, etc., etc. So you can record this in a template and then you just have to apply it it goes until the building of the uh, analysis of the indication table in this version. Let's see an example. I open one analysis file here. This is a planar panel of composites, a flat panel of composites, okay, from which uh, I inspect with a zero degree probe immersion testing. I scan like this, incremental index scanning, and also linear scan is done along this phase of the probe like this. And this is my acquired data. So this is real data here. Uh, acquired from M2M systems. It gives, of course, uh, the front wall and back wall echo, and I want to uh, identify indications and typical defects in this uh, flat component is delamination. Okay? So, let's say I have already uh, inspected a similar component, a component of the same range, or a part of the component, and I want to apply that for the rest. You can record the analysis procedure in a template, and then you just have to apply it. 
I click on template. I have here my template available as a file because you can here uh, uh, add a template once you have done a given work. It records that in a file and then you apply it. It does the gate, the uh, threshold selection. In this case, we use segmentation, so segmentation parameters. Uh, selection, zone of selections is also uh, automated. And it goes into the creation of the indication tables. In a few seconds, my analysis is done now in this range with no other uh, action from the users. Of course, uh, it has to be reliable. The templates have to be checked by the level 3 guy, let's say, and then it can be applied safely. So you can check, of course, what you have. But my analysis table is already created. I have 11 indications here available with uh, level of amplitude, location, sizing information. You can also customize this indication table. And you can directly generate your report. You can give a name. The analysis is done. So it's to give you, of course, first of that, of all, you have to uh, create these templates. But once it's done, once it's reliable, the analysis work can be really, uh, really, really optimized. And we have done this work for a few customers on the specific uh, procedures of analysis. And I think they are quite happy with this possibility, full automation of the analysis process. OK, let's mention also the other now uh, simulation modules. Back to simulation. A few words on the guided wave tools for those who are interested in this topic. No major new features in 2017 on this, but let's mention the, the main thing. So Siva guided wave allows to compute dispersion curves in the various components, to compute fields, for instance, uh, in a cross section, in a pipe, or in a, in a rail track, for instance, and to simulate the response of defects, like it can use here in this case, inspection simulation tools. It covers various specimen geometries, planar, tubular, rail, rail, tulicate section, with different technologies of transducers, piezo, magnetostructive, EMAPs, single element or arrays, typically for pipe inspections. And so if you have more interest in it and you don't know these modules, don't hesitate to contact us for more information. Siva ID currents also include the field calculation tools to display electromagnetic field uh, distributions and field current density distributions, penetration depths, can compute uh, impedance diagram plots. You can compute inspection simulations as well. So it means you scan an EQ and sensor in a component and you compute the response of a given defect. Here you see an image from a bobbin coil tube inspection. You can perform, you have access to all the parametric studies, sensitivity analysis, and POD curves tools that we have discussed before with the meta models, or maybe uh, without meta models. I mean, using meta models is not mandatory, but you have access to that in CYT. You can cover conventional eddy current probes, eddy current arrays. I will show you that. Remote field technique. And now, which is a new feature, so you can also cover pulsed eddy current. You see here, this image <coughs> is uh, the information of the uh, versus time of the uh, uh, reaction uh, of the eddy current diffusion through time versus time. OK, let's see quite quickly. It looks like. The LQN modules. OK. So specimen probe inspection flows, a similar organization of the UT one. For specimen, uh, more limited than the UT and RT modules with the less uh, Less geometries, but planar inspection, fasten plate or tube inspection is available.
probe, different type of sensor is available. Cylindrical coils, the most common ones, maybe with ferrite cores, cylindrical, C-shaped, or E-shaped, like this, or no ferrite. Rectangular coil, magnetic sensor, it stands for GMR sensors, racetrack, decoil, spiral, and a new one, which is the yoke, the yoke design here with the magnetic circuits that you can uh, enable now with uh, here a flat uh, end or an advanced or uh, specific shape here with different number of coils uh, surrounded around this yoke here and of course all parameters to define your own geometry. So this is a new uh, a new type of probe available with SIVA 2017, the York one. Instead of simple, let's also remind uh, plus point design. It's uh, not new in this version, but new from the last one. So maybe you have uh, not used it that much for the moment. So plus point design is a orthogonally wanded coils. So quite common uh, probe type as well. Rototest used quite a lot in aerospace applications for bore inspection with d coil shape and d ferrite shapes and array probe which is so a decurrent arrays I will come back to this a bit later okay so quite a lot of different shape of uh, sensors and different type of sensors available and a new one now in CBA 2017 which is the yoke then so a flow can be defined different shape you can build several defects, you can define inclusions, you have different dimensions, and you scan all other parts, if you want. Acquisition, this is where you define the type of acquisitions. So either you are, let's say, in a conventional mode, and you define here, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the 50 kilohertz frequency, and you define that coil 1 is used, or reflection mode with coil 1 as an emitter and coil 2 as a receiver here, you have reception, input current to define which is the receiver, which is the, recept the emitter, and differential mode can be also defined with these tables by defining here, your two coils here and 1 and minus 1 in reception to define the differential voltage. A new type of uh, method is also available here. This is pulse burst. If you select pulse burst, you access to uh, the impulse signals, and then you will go to uh, pulsed eddy current applications in time domain now. So you have here one example of pulse signals, but you can generate new ones here with this pulse signals generator. You have access here to different shape and you can here define different parameters to define your pulse. If you do like this, then the computation will be uh, versus time and in particular you will be able to analyze the versus time, the, the field seen by the receivers due to the uh, decay rate of the diff electron diffusion, which is the quantity uh, used in pulse telecurrent. Let's see quickly one example with uh, an eddy current array. <coughs> eddy current array can be also fully defined in CIVA. It's not that new, but has been fully rebuilt uh, in CIVA 2016, so uh, maybe you have not used it yet. Okay, so it's available as here, a reprobe. You can easily define how many uh, calls you want in your array. Step between each column, shape of each calls in one, uh, one click, diagonal or not. And then you have some menus to easily define how you excite. Do you excite them with a two drivers, one receivers, oriented like this, or on the same lines. 
convert mode, longitudinal mode, or you may have just two calls used, or a single one, using double function, common functions. So it's really, with this editor, easy to define different acquisition mode, and then you do your electronic scan along the array to cover the these dimensions. And then, usually, the interest of a different array is to scan only along a line. In this case, we have defined, for instance, uh, axial and transverse channels. The rest of the simulation is similar to another CIVA current case, and you can have here C scan view at the end. This is the response of the longitudinal channels. We can see that longitudinal defects are seen quite clearly, whereas transverse defects are hardly visible, and even maybe not visible. The analysis windows here with uh, the response versus x-axis, amplitude, independence plane, etc. And a second channel is defined here for the transverse mode. And to this mode, the transverse defects are uh, detected thanks to this mode. But the longitudinal defects are not anymore seen. Okay, so what are the new features to summarize them in CIVA Decurrence? The new yoke type of sensors with one, two, or three calls. You see here an example of a field computation with such sensors. Pulse steady current applications with a pulse signal in the input and then in the output a C-scan view and a time domain view also. The decrease of the magnetic field is used as a quantity to analyze, especially for wall thickness measurements. We can also mention the ability to compute signal, lift up signal angle really uh, easily. Uh, now available both for common and separated transmit receive function sensor. It was more limited before to a single coil. To finish this presentation, let's say a word about the RT and CT uh, modules. Uh, you maybe you know them. You can simulate both direct and scattering radiations in these modules. Uh, it, you can also do POD in CT, and the output is a typical radiogram. It covers X-ray, gamma ray, and high energy sources. And also CT uh, reconstruction algorithms are available. In particular, a new algorithm available in this version is a SART algorithm available for CT reconstructions. SART is particularly useful if the uh, scanning is not uh, classical. You used to have only helical and circular scanning with SIVA until now. See, with SIVA 2017, you can define partial helical or partial circular scanning, but also robotic scanning. You can see here some example of complex scanning. And with this, SART algorithms can be used to enable the reconstruction in addition to the existing uh, PIX-TV and FDK algorithms already available. So the CT module has been enriched in this version. Let's just quickly uh, how it looks like. And then we will go to the uh, question and answers session. Okay, here, so this is a CT examples with a uh, titanium lattice here. So you have the menus of the CT or RT modules, uh, which is uh, quite common uh, with a uh, uh, very large possibilities for the complex geometry of specimen, material data with all cross-section data with all attenuation parameters available here. Source menu, gamma ray, x-ray, or high energies, linear accelerators, for instance, can be done. Detector with DR, computed radiographies, but also uh, conventional argentic film available in the RT module. 
okay, flaws can be defined. In this city application, there is no defect, but you can also. And then uh, menus to uh, define, uh, for instance, uh, the exposure time, the detector parameters, etc. Okay, so you can first compute a radio acquisition, a radio uh, calculation with one shot, but with CT, usually, uh, you have a scanning in order to give you not only one, but several projections. And then you can build 3D reconstruction based on these different projections. Let's see what it looks like with, in this case, the SARP algorithms. Okay, you have here uh, this mode of reconstructions and you can assess if the SARP worked well or not for your reconstruction. So, new things in terms of CT reconstruction with these versions. Complex scanning patterns and uh, SARP algorithms. Well, that's it for the overview of the SIVA menu, SIVA modules, and the highlight on the new features. So of course, we spent most of the time on the UT modules. Uh, we also covered the meta models, which is uh, really a major new things for parametric studies and POD studies. Uh, so many things to discover. Of course, we invite you to join us for uh, training sessions to go uh, further on this, to spend time to discover how to use correctly all these features. Uh, so don't hesitate to, uh, to, uh, to come back to us for, uh, for, to attend on these sessions.